Conroy 74 is out in front. Duke's used to that position, and he'll fight to keep it. The last driver in number 70 seems to be holding up well, but he's having a little trouble with number 7. driver is a miracle man, but this is the first time that he's raced in the metropolitan area, so he still has a lot to prove. He's doing all right. He's riding herd on Duke Hutchins, fighting to get up there where it counts. Duke's blocking him. Up pretty early, aren't you, son? Hello, Mom. What are you doing here? You know, I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, I thought I'd see what the old leg beater could do. I thought it did all right. Not bad. What are you doing out here? Oh, I often come out here at daylight. I pick daisies in the field. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? Okay, Ma. You love racing as much as your father did. He loved it and it killed him. But cars are safe these days. He might never have had that accident if... He was one of the greatest racing drivers in the game, Johnny. And yet he crashed. Do you think you could be better than your father? You're right, Mother. Let's forget it. I broke my promise talking about racing. It's a promise that won't work, Johnny. You'd always have regrets. And you'd never forgive me. Well, I'll try one more thing. Say, this seems to be something about racing. Yes. Auto racing. Are you ready? All set.
Your father was in that car. That's how he died. I wouldn't have let you see it, Johnny, but well, I wanted you to know why I've been so afraid. That film is my last argument. I promise you'll never hear about it anymore. This was taken the morning of the accident. That's Breezy Bradley, Dad's mechanic. He was almost killed in another accident. Your father and I were as close as two people could be. For years, we barnstormed the dirt tracks together. You were born in Chillicothe, Ohio. It was a nice town, but we had to move on in a couple of weeks. Guess I was too young to appreciate Chillicothe. <laughs> Breezy loved your father. He'd, he'd do anything in the world for you, Johnny. Johnny, Breezy has a garage in Los Angeles. Somebody? Yeah, is Mr. Bradley here? No, oh, he's not around right now. Mr. Bradley build this? Yeah, that's a new job for Mike Conroy. I guess you heard of him. I guess I have. A yeah, nice little speed package there. I'll say. Breezy does most of the work on Conroy's string of midgets. He'll be back pretty soon. Why don't you ask the girl in the office? Okay, thanks. Uh oh, excuse me. Uh, sit down, please. Thanks. Can you spell perpendicular? Of course. P-U-R... Oh, no, that's not right. I thought of that version myself. P-I-R. Oh, I thought of that one, too. Damn it, I thought I had a dictionary here someplace. Perpendicular. Must you say perpendicular? Why can't you say straight up and down? No, and I can't say horizontal, either. I got it. P E R P E N D I C U L A R. That's right. Thanks so much. You're smart. I'm willing. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Mr. Bradley. So am I. I've been phoning all over town trying to find him. He's always missing when things begin to pile up around him. Roy Miller was in about those bearings. And Frank Hansen called. He needs a new rear axle assembly. And Mike Conroy's been trying to get you. You told me you'd be back in half an hour. Oh, sorry, honey. I was out on a big deal. Made it all the way in from Riverside in 38 minutes. Not bad driving, is it? Well, now, in the first place, it happens to be 55 miles from Riverside. And in that traffic, you couldn't make it in an hour. And in the second place, I happen to know that you were inhaling beer at Kelly's bar. I wasn't in anybody's bar. Well, how do you expect me to run this place by myself? So help me, Uncle Breezy. If you don't stay on the job, I'm going to leave you high and dry. Oh, no. And you're tight. This man's been waiting to see you. I'm Johnny Randall. You sure are. It's like meeting your old man all over again. He was my best friend. So I heard. Uh, we had some tough times together. And we had some good ones, too. How's your mother? She's fine, thanks. I got a letter from her. I know. I haven't seen her in a long while, but I've never forgotten her. Come on in here, son. Hey, this is Johnny Randall. Well. Son of the greatest driver that ever stopped the throttle. Johnny and I have met. I understand you're going to stay at our house. Am I? Of course you are. We've got a spare room over there. You don't suppose I'd let you live anywhere else, do you? You don't know how grateful I am. Oh, Tony and I will be delighted to have you with us, won't we, Tony? Uh-huh. Delighted. Hello, Mike. Hello, Breezy. Mike, I'd like to have you meet... Well, have you made up your mind about tonight? Not yet. You'd better. I don't want to get tough with you. What'd you say, Breezy? Mike, I'd like you to meet Johnny Randall. He just come to work for me. Johnny, this is Mike Conroy. Hello, Johnny. I read about you, Mr. Conroy. Thanks. 
This is Speed Randall's boy. I guess I don't have to tell you who he was. Well, I should say you don't. I never saw your father race, Johnny. That was before my time, but everybody in the game knows about Speed Randall. I'm glad to meet his son. Thanks. His mother writes me and says he knows the inside of an engine the same as his old man did. Well, then you should know something about racing, too. Well, I've never done any professionally. But you're interested, huh? Oh, you bet I am. Yeah, that's natural. Tony tells me number 74 is ready. That's right. That's a special job I had built. Duke Cutkin's going to try her out this afternoon. Would you like to go over to the track? Oh, I'd like nothing better. Come on, I want you to meet Duke. Good, come on, I'll drive you out. Breezy! How about you staying here running the business for five minutes? Well, 74 is my business, too. I got to go and see if she runs right, don't I? Breezy! I'll only be gone about a half an hour, honey. Oh, I don't mean that. But I don't want you to forget what Mrs. Randall said in her letter about Johnny. Well, she wants him to get as full of the racing game, don't she? But she begged you not to encourage him to drive. Ah, that's the last thing I'd ever think of doing. Oh, don't you put on an act for me. You're as crazy about racing as he is. Ever since you gave it up, you get a kick out of developing new talent. You're always hunting for it. Uh, you make me feel like an old vampire or something. I gotta go out the track and see that Johnny don't get any ideas, because if he gets any, I'm gonna nip him right in the butt. Look, Angel, I, uh, I told you I have a table at my foot tonight. Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't go, Mike. You see, Johnny Randall just reached town, and he's staying with us, and, well, I couldn't very well run out on him the very first night he's here. Sounds like a lot of good reasons. Are there any you're holding back? Oh, no. Why doesn't Randall stay in a hotel? We'll just try and find one where he could get a room. You've got me there. All right, Angel, but uh, don't give him any ideas, huh? Duke, you ought to beat anything on wheels with this new job. <laughs> with me driving your assist to win Elise Grand this evening. All right, let's get her out of here. Right. Got it, Breezy. Leave it to Duke to pull it out of her. That guy's tops. Won 14 main events last season. How would you like to follow one of those crates? Oh, I'd like to try it once. Hop into number four and take around the track a couple of times. Oh, boy, thanks. Uh, you better not, Johnny. Why not? Let's see what he's got. Maybe he's a chip off the old block. Maybe he is, but I'm not going to let him risk breaking his neck. Well, I've had some experience, Mr. Bradley. Not with a real race. Oh, but... give the kid a chance, Breezy. Come on, Johnny. This baby's a has-been, a dog, so whatever you do, keep out of Duke's way. Get me? I got you, Mr. Conroy. All right, okay, fellas, take him out. All right. Remember, Johnny, I'm against it. Let's go, fella. And he just can't stay behind. Hey, Phil, pull him in.
thought you said that crate was a dog. What's the idea of trying to get me erased? I ought to hang one on your eye. Yeah? I told you to stay away from Duke. <laughs> he did stay away from him about five lengths. Though. Chump, that new job cost around 5,000 bucks. If you'd smashed it but up, I I'd didn't have... smash it. Trying to show me up. I'm not trying to show anybody up. I just couldn't help it. It's your own idea, Mike. I didn't want the kid to get into the car in the first place. Oh, well, forget it. Don't let it go to your head, Johnny. Maybe we haven't got all the bugs out of number 74 yet. I'll say we haven't. You might be a pretty good driver if you learn how to take orders. I could use another man. You mean you want me to drive for you? Sure. Oh, not a chance in the world. But, Mr. Bradley... Oh, do you want to break your poor mother's heart? But my mother said... What's his mother got to do with it? What's his mother got to do with it? Mrs. Randall and I have been friends for a great many years, and I'm not going to let her down. Thank you, Mr. Conroy. I know you can drive, son. I saw you out the track there today. Mike Conroy saw you, too. He said I might become pretty good. Oh, he did, did he? That's awful nice of him, isn't it? He knows darn well you could become great. It's born in you, son. You're a natural. Then why shouldn't I? Because you have to forget the whole thing, son. Leave it all behind you. Oh, I know it was quite a sacrifice. I went through the same thing myself. A picture of your father, son. I know. That was taken up in San Francisco. Uh, no, in uh, Seattle. That is one of the very few times he was ever beaten. May I have it? Sure. <laughs> Who's this, you? Yeah. Think it over, son. No, oh, that's not me. That's Tony. <laughs> Cute, eh? She's a panic. Who's a panic? You are. Before and after. Uncle Breezy, I told you never to show this picture to anyone. I didn't show it to him. He found it himself. I keep hiding it, and he keeps finding it. Oh. Ready? All set. Let's go. Conroy seems like a nice guy. Very nice. I suppose he's what you'd call a man of the world? That's right. Weren't you supposed to have a date with him tonight? Uh, there's the Groms Chum Theater. And off in that direction is Beverly Hills. And further off is the ocean. Weren't you? How did you know? I heard what he said when he came in the office. Of course, it's none of my business. None whatever. But are you? I mean, is he? You aren't engaged, are you? Not quite. He's still a nice guy. He offered me a job. As a racing driver? Yeah. I think I'll take it, too. Oh, I see. I hate to tell you this, Mike. But Johnny Randall is determined to become a racer. Yeah. If you feel the same way about it, make that offer all over again, will you? Yeah. Goodbye, Mike. Honest, I don't care about the crowds or having my name on a poster. I'll tell you what it is. Ask the pilot who loves to fly a jet plane at 500 miles an hour. He can't tell you either. But whatever it is that drives him, that's what drives me. Isn't she something? Slick as a little blonde. Just imagine, a three and a half inch stroke develops 90 horsepower, 6,500 RPMs. He's good. He knows what makes him tick. Just like his old man. Hello, fellas. Hello, Hello Mike. Mike. Just a grease monkey, huh? All these 60s are made like watches. It's a kick to take them apart. Come on in, Johnny. I want to talk to you. Johnny, the other day, Duke Hutkin's share of the purse was 1,500 bucks. He got that for a ride of seven and a half miles in the feature event, roughly 200 bucks a mile. Less your percentage, eh, Mike? That's right. So that netted Duke 100 bucks a mile. Not bad, huh? 750 bucks for one ride? You can make that kind of dough, not right away, of course, but you can work up to it. I'm willing to give you a chance. Here it is in black and white. Read it. Get a lawyer to put this all on one sheet of paper, Mike. I didn't. I dictated it myself. I'm giving you a weekly guarantee during your training period. Twice as much as this guy pays you. And you'll get a regular cut of any purse you might win. 
Then that's saying something for you, because you usually take a guy's right eye. Mister, you've got a deal. Hey, you Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, hello, Tony. Well, I'm surprised to find you here. Surprised? What goes on? I'm signing a contract with Mr. Conroy. Oh? I'm gonna make a star out of him. I'm sure you are. After all I tried to do. Oh, well. Like father, like son. Well, I gotta go see a man. Just a minute, you're going to see a woman first. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I tried everything I knew. I even got down on my knees. I know, in reverse. But how can you get down on your knees in reverse? You listen to me. You keep this one, Johnny. Couldn't stop his old man, and the kid's got the same kind of stuff in him. I tell you, gal, you cannot buck faith. Can't I? No. You just watch me. The luck in the world. Thanks, Tony. You too, Mike. You've made more names than any promoter in the game. What should we do to celebrate? How's about throwing a party for us? I like nothing better. How about tonight? Fine. Take us out to dinner someplace, and then we'll all go to your apartment. You love Mike's place, Johnny. I do. He has such exquisite taste. I've been saving this for a special occasion, Johnny. This is it. Why, why a man should drink, Johnny? And women are all of them. Uncle Breezy. Oh, honey, you're my niece and you're an exception. Well, they always launch ships with this stuff. They'll launch your career the same way, Johnny. Thanks, Mike. Hope I can live up to all of this. You've done all right so far. Mmm, good. In fact, it's good all the way down. I'm glad you like it, Tony. I'll get another bottle. You know, it isn't often a beginner has a chance to train with a man like Mike Conroy. You think a lot of him, don't you? Yes. Any objections? I feel a dance coming on. Play some music for me, Uncle Breezy. You don't have to say that a half a dozen times. Reinforcements coming up. Make it sweet, Uncle Breezy. It's honorable. Breezy, this is no place for me. I'm getting out of here. Uh, don't be a sucker. She's giving you the business. What for? I wish I knew. She's got something up her sleeve, I can tell you that. How? Oh. oh. When you know women the way I know them. How well do you know them? How well? I paid alimony three times. Johnny, don't you love this place? I do. You should. I had it done by a decorator, but Tony didn't give him a chance. She selected a color scheme, picked out the drapes, and half the furniture. I wanted her to be satisfied. I expect her to live here one of these days. Ooh, Johnny might misunderstand. A lot of things I don't understand around here. You're right, Johnny. Besides, it's quarter to one. We'd better get home and get some sleep. Well, we didn't even finish one dance yet. Oh, enough is enough. Well, I, uh, I hate to see you boys go, but if you think you must, why, uh, I'll take Tony home. Well, they can't go. I was just going to fix some ham and eggs. You were? Mm -hmm. I don't want any ham and eggs. Then you go get some sleep and Johnny will see me home. Won't you, Johnny? Please? Ask Mike. I take orders from him now. Well, you sound like you don't like the idea of working for me. Now, you boys argue it out among yourself as to who's going to take Tony home. But be sure she gets home. I had a good time, Mike. It's okay. I'll dig up the Maggie. Good night, Breezy. Good night. Get my hat for me, will you? What are you trying to cook up between Johnny and Mike? If you must know. I'm the fly of the ointment. I'm going to see to it that Johnny breaks his contract with Mike. Honey, you're crazy. Am I? Johnny's already mad at Mike. Oh, gosh darn you. Niece or no niece, you'd make any man start drinking. You can't do that, Johnny. Well, I'm only trying to do what you should have done. 
steer Johnny away from the racing game, as his mother asked you to do. Uh, Good night. Enjoying yourself? Yeah. I can't remember when I've had a better time. Maybe this will make up for it. Let me go. Tony, everything's ready. No sense me staying around here, Conroy. Night, Tony. Oh, one thing before I go. Could I see that contract? Yeah, sure. What's the idea? I'm not working for you. I'm through. I made you an offer in good faith. You're going through with it. What do you do, sue me? I promise you'll never drive for anybody else. That's all right with me. <laughs> Chip off the old block. You're not even a splinter. Listen, chump, you're yellow. Your mice are pretty near all gone, aren't they? Very seldom you see a guy with one of those on each eye. Conroy's thorough in more ways than one. He's blacklisted me, Breezy. What? There's an owner in town who'll give me a chance to drive his car. But he can't lick me. Not again. Don't you worry, son. You've got a new manager. You're going to drive for me. Yeah? Yeah, but we got to keep it quiet. Got to keep it away from Tony or she'll gab it all over the place. You can't keep anything from Tony. Well, we have to, and the starter shall gum the whole thing up. What am I going to drive? Drive. Come here, I'll show you. There she is. I designed her myself, put her together with my own hands. Who took her apart? Well, Tommy Swain was my driver. He was, huh? Yeah, he drove her all season. He won six main events with her. Where is he now? Well, Tommy took a little trip. I haven't seen him in quite some time. Oh, she's sensitive and temperamental. She's got a great big heart in her. Here. In your hands, she'll be dynamite. I thought you were so worried about my mother. I still am. But I got that all figured out. Look, we'll put a mask on you and call you the mask driver. That's box office, son. We'll barnstorm a little while, race in the sticks and keep building you up and teasing these sports writers. You know, they'll say, who is this mask driver? And then when we're all set, we'll go to town and cop all the big prizes. That's my dream, son. You make it come true. Breezy, you've got a deal. are you feeding him? Oh, me? Well, something's happened to you. Who's running your books, Uncle Breezy? You are, honey. Then why don't you tell me whose job this is? I've been at you for weeks, and all I get is double talk. It's a special. Who are you building it for? Uh, fellow up in San Jose. Is that right, Johnny? That's what he told me. What's his name? 
His name. And why isn't it on the books? Because the man swore me to secrecy. He's got a new twist on this baby. It's revolutionary. Going to do away with all the old traditions. The man's a genius. That's what he is. Mm -hmm. And what are you getting for it? Oh, I haven't figured that out yet. Got to figure the cost of parts and the time and the little profit. And when we get it all done, Johnny and I are going to deliver it to the man. We'll have to stay with it a little while, too, to take the bugs out of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, who's going to drive it? What? You heard me. Who's going to drive it? Who's going to drive it? Mm-hmm. A man from the east. She's wise. Uh, she'll just grow up with her. Soon she'll be griping. Yeah, but we won't be here. sleep in my own bed. I wonder where Tony is. Oh, she's around someplace. I hope she isn't sore. Uh, she won't be when she sees all these pretty presents we got for her. Well, that's right. Probably over at the garage. You know, Tony always on the job. Perhaps we should have gone there first. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That's the wrong technique. Always do. That's what gets them. Boy, am I happy when I think of the way the fans went for you at those dirt tracks. That mystery stuff pays off, kid. We'll kill them here in Los Angeles. We'll kill them. Who are you going to kill this time, Uncle Breezy? Oh, hello, honey. We didn't know you were home. But I had hopes. I've missed you, Tony. Have you? How nice. Well, you're both looking well. All suntan and everything. Been out in the sun a lot, haven't you, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, what was that? A kiss or a suck and a puss? Christmas. Yeah, presents. What kind of a trip did you have? I know you're dying to tell me all about it. Sure, sure. Look at all the pretty things we brought you. Oh, lovely. I told you about the trip and the letters, but you never answered one of them. Well, how could I? You moved so fast. San Jose, Oakland, Tacoma. Oh, we were with Mr. Uh, uh, Dave Stevenson. Huh? Oh, yeah. Good old Dave. What a guy, eh, Johnny? Uh, did you like him, Johnny? Well, to tell you the truth... Don't I... tell me the truth. I couldn't bear it. Well, Johnny and Dave were just that. Did he like the racer you built for him? Crazy over it, wasn't he, Johnny? Wasn't he, Johnny? Just crazy. And that wasn't by any chance the old Bradley Comet that you dug up and built all over again. Oh, no. Oh, the Bradley Comet. You mean that old heap that I... Oh. <laughs> She's kidding us, Johnny. Yeah. Why, the Bradley Comet is locked up over in the garage. You know that, honey. And I found the key. You liar. Are you forgetting that I am your uncle? You're double-dealing, two-timing liars, both of you, treating me as if I were a child. A scheming old man and a lamb led to the slaughter. Did you tell him what the comet did to Tommy Swain? She didn't do anything to Tommy. No? Then where is he now? How do I know? I could never keep track of that guy. And did you tell him she was a jinx to every man who ever took her out on a track? She hasn't been a jinx to Johnny. I don't believe in jinxes. The masked rider. Kid stuff. Kid stuff? Oh, is that what you think? Let me tell you, young lady, that kid stuff draws big crowds. 
Wait till you see Johnny at the Benelli track tomorrow. I don't want to see him. Oh, I can't drive my first race without you in the stands, Tony. You're my luck. Oh, no, I'm not. Not when you drive the Bradley Comet. But she's different now. Oh, don't be sore, Abby. Maybe you can't help risking your neck, but you should have trusted me. It's just like being in love with a drunk. You know he can't help drinking, but you hate to have him lie about it. You mean you love me? Who said I did? No. No woman can talk to me like that, niece or no niece. I'm going up there and give her a piece of my mind. And let me tell you something else. I wouldn't marry any man who might make me a widow six weeks after the wedding, even if you asked me to marry you, which you didn't, and even if I loved you, which I don't. Goodbye. Tony, what does she mean by all that double talk? Ah, she meant goodbye. <laughs> Number 74 is your favorite thrill master, Duke Hutkins. And piloting number 70, a new star, the masked driver. The famous masked marble. Who do you guys think you're kidding? Just the customers, that's all that counts, Mike. It's a sellout. He didn't draw him. Maybe that mask is a good idea. I can't see how scared you are. Besides, it's better than trading on your old man's reputation. Of course, he didn't have to wear one. Shut him! Let him go. I taught him a lesson once. It'd be fun to do it again. Duke will fix it. He's razzing you, Johnny. Trying to break your nerve. Are you nervous? No. I am. Look at my hands. Don't show me. It might be catching. Look, Johnny. Number 70 won't let you down. You do have faith in her, don't you? Don't worry. We speak the same language. Good boy. How's she standing up, Duke? You're not worried about the boy Wonder, are you? He's driving a good car. Listen, boss, I've been saving this for you. I got it from one of the guys in Breezy's garage. At number 70, that's the old Bradley special in a new suit of clothes. Are you sure? That's what the fellow told me. There's something about that car. I wonder if Fran will know. Sure he does. He worked on it. He's dumber than I thought he was. Harry, get on in front of number 70 and stay there. OK, Mike. Good luck to you. The man in the mask faces a tough assignment in this race. His opponents are veteran drivers who know all the tricks of the trade and they're bound to give him a battle. We wish him luck. He'll need it. No, you're just sitting way back there when I have all this room to myself. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Mike. I know you're not supposed to be on my side, but... I'm not on either side. I'm neutral. <laughs> that's encouraging. And here they come down the track. Looks like it might be a start. It is a start, and there they go. driver is a miracle man, but this is the first time that he's raced in the metropolitan area, so he still has a lot to prove. He's doing all right. He's riding hurt on Duke Hutchins. 
fight to get up there where it counts. Duke's blocking him. Uh-oh. There goes the mask driver into the spin. But he kept it on all four wheels, and he's back on the track. He's speeding ahead, catching up, catching up. Now they're together again. Locking wheels, that's dangerous sport. Huh? The mask driver's in trouble. Real trouble. There he goes. Good heaven. Lady Luck gave him the wrong steer that time. But keep your seats, everybody. Don't go out on the speedway. The race will be resumed as soon as the track is cleared of wreckage. Each driver will start from the same position he held at the time of the accident. Please keep your seats. Remember me? Hi, Mom. Where'd you get that hat? <laughs> Don't you like it? <laughs> How you doing, Johnny? I'm okay. I'm glad you're here, Mom. Well, you expected me, didn't you? I knew you'd have to know about it. It's breezy, why are you? No, his niece phoned me. Tony? Mm -hmm. She's a lovely girl, Johnny. Hospital nightgowns. They tie in the back. I know. Is your nurse good to you? Too good. She gives me baths. <laughs> oh, that was quite a little spear you had, Johnny. Went through a fence, didn't you? I wasn't hurt. Much. I'm sorry I didn't let you know about it. I didn't want to worry you. Thought you'd give it to me all in one joke. Well, have you had enough time? Racing, I mean. Don't you think it's time you came home and settled down? You always wanted to go in business for yourself. The opportunity's still there. I can't go home now, Mom. Why not? I've got to drive one more race. One more race? Now, where have I heard that before? Maybe Dad said it. But he couldn't have had the same reason. Look, Mom, that crack cup tore me in pieces. If I gave up now, it'd be because I'm afraid. Are you afraid, Johnny? Yes. That's why I'm going to try it again. Forget about it. Come on now, tell me all about Tony. Will you stop picking on me? I couldn't help it. Stop. Of course you could help it. If you encouraged him to drive that jinx comet of yours, he wouldn't be where he is today. Ooh, there was a time when I'd have spanked you good for talking like that to me. Oh, well, it's too late for that now. How is he, Kate? Is he all right? Yes, he's going to race again. What? But you mustn't let him. Oh, Tony, when I sent Johnny to Breezy, I knew what would happen. When you have a husband and perhaps a son, you'll find out that the best way to handle them is let them do what they want. That's what I always told him. Let them find out for themselves what's right and what's wrong. But he shouldn't go back so soon. It's dangerous. Oh, that's a chance we have to take. But Johnny's is more afraid of a broken spirit than he is of broken bones. Of course, you know, he loves you. Sure she does. She started working on him the minute he got here. How can you say such a thing? It's all right, Tony. That's how I got his father. <laughs> Well, Tony. You really like me. Like you? Holy smoke. I didn't know you could dance like that. All the girls are taking ballet lessons nowadays. It keeps us in trim. Perfect trim. I've worn out dozens of pairs of these things. What's the matter? I... Aren't you feeling well? Tony, I... Well, 
So you finally did get around to it. I'm crazy about you. So your mother told me. But I was waiting to hear it from you. Well, I wanted to tell you. Well, then why didn't you? I never worked so hard for anything in my life. Look, stop stalling. Will you marry me or won't you? Of course I will. Thanks. I wanted to ask you, but... But you were waiting until you were in the money, right? Oh, you don't. Don't you know I wouldn't care if you didn't have a nickel in the world? Oh, you wouldn't, wouldn't you? Oh, I have news for you. I just proposed to Johnny, and he accepted me. Oh, I'm so glad. You proposed to him? Uh -huh. With your shoes off? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He was worried about being able to support me. Well, what about that super gas station you were going to have in our hometown? Oh, I haven't enough money to build. I have a little money, and so is Uncle Breezy. We could all be partners. Oh, is that so? Well, I got a little business of my own right here. Oh, that reminds me. Who's looking after it? I better get over there. Goodbye, darling. Uh, you did say you'd have me, didn't you? You bet I did. You heard him. He's back out now. I'll sue you. Be seeing you. <laughs> If I could only win the sweepstakes, I'd be in the big dough. That's just what I've been waiting to hear you say. Look, Johnny, I got her fixed up all over again. Number 70? Yes. Yeah. Is that the car you drove in the last race? Oh, she's okay. Sweet little buggy. Bob Ware phoned me only this morning, Kate. He wants to release a story of Johnny will race for the cup. None of that mess stuff. He wants him to use his own name. His father's name? Yes. And he said he'll give you a top billing. What'll I tell him? What'll I tell him, Kate? Tell him to go ahead. Good. You won't discourage him, will you, Kate? Uh, Johnny knows what he wants to do. You bet Johnny knows what he wants to do. I'll go phone Bob. Oh, same old Breezy. Well, here we go again, Mom. Mm-hmm. Here we go again. Here it is, the 30 lap Gold Cup sweepstakes. Some of the crack drivers in the country are competing in this event. Mike Conroy drives his own number 74 for the first time this season. Duke Hudkins is at the wheel of Conroy's 123. And today, the masked driver rides unmasked. Johnny Randall, son of Speed Randall of Indianapolis fame. Trouble is, if he does win this race, he'll never want to give it up. That's the chance we have to take. You gotta be a hero to ride in this bus. Brother, you're on your way to St. Peter's rest home. Keep your head, son. Pay no attention to what anybody says. You're going to be okay. I know, I know. I just want to get going, that's all. Good luck, Duke. Every man for himself today. Just watch me. Seventy's my meat. You recall that young Randall crashed at this track several months ago. But today, he's driving the same car, number 70. It's a rugged game, but they all come back for more. Folks, it looks like a real start this time. Every man's holding his position. Oh, here they come. It looks like a good start this time. There's the flag. This is it. They're off. Mike Conroy at 74 is out in front right from the beginning. Randall in 70 and Hopkins in 123. 
three are still playing Bumps the Daisy. Now the two drivers are running neck and neck. 70 and 123. Randall and Hudson. He may be dead before he reaches the hospital. Oh, it'll take more than a little crack up like that to kill an hombre like Duke. And he had it coming. Forced him in. I didn't have to pass him. Oh, sure you did. You want to win, don't you, son? Don't let it get you down. I can't go through with it. Are you nuts? Get in the jaw. What do you want me to do? Tell him you lost your nerve? Tell him anything you like. That's what they'll think. A fine fade out for Speed Randall's son. How's it going, boys? In reverse. Johnny's throwing in the towel. He's quitting cold. Quitting? Yes. That's what you wanted, isn't it? To keep him off the track so he wouldn't get hurt? Well, you've got your wish. But by golly, this is one thing you can't blame on me. What's the matter, Johnny? Ah, you saw what happened. Well, you couldn't help that. Breezy's right. I was afraid for you, but I gloried in the fact that you had the nerve to try it again. Why, if you quit now, you regret it all your life. I can't help it, Tony. You don't know. Oh, I do know. I know it took a lot of courage for you to race again. And I know you've still got that courage. Why, if I thought you'd lost it, I'd never marry you. So you'd run out on me, huh? Yes. If you run, I run. But you're not going to. You're going to finish what you started. Now get in that car and give them a fight, Johnny. Win or lose, I don't care. Don't give up. Here's something for luck. I'll say it's something. Come on, Breezy, roll her out. What happened? What did Tony say to you? It isn't so much what she said, it's what she did. Well, I don't know anything about women, but maybe it's just as well. They're now lining up on the track, ready to resume the contest. Each driver in the place he held when the race was stopped in the 17th lap. They still have 13 laps to go. Thirteen. Johnny's all right. He'll finish the race. Yes, and if Johnny wins this race, he'll overnight jump from track to track to sleep in the back of a sedan. Would you do that, Tony? You did. Here they come, and there's the flag, and they're off again. Mike Conroy at 74 in the lead, and Johnny Randall at number 70, now in fifth position. Randall's trying to get up front, but he finds it hard going. A battle for them lead she gains.
74, Randall and Conroy racing hub to hub. Want the sweepstakes? That money's going to buy our one stop garage. Bradley and Randall, complete automotive service. You mean that, Johnny? Of course I do. Would you mind stepping back? I'd like to take a picture here. Johnny, take that pose again. 